Hello, everybody. Right now for me, it is 11.09 a.m. So that's early for some people, or it could be late for others. Personally, for me, it's not too early, but it's also the time where like you can't be too loud. I apologize if I'm a little quiet. So today we're doing something a little different than normal. Um, I used to do these type of videos when I first started my channel. Um, recently, I've had some people ask me, like, how do you make your intros and stuff like that? And obviously, there's a lot of other tutorials on YouTube you could learn for, but I have a specific way of just making my own. So if you guys would like to know that, keep on watching and you can follow along if you want. So today, I'll be teaching you guys step-by-step step how I make my own animated intros. Um, so first, let's us uh, start off in Roblox Studio. The things we're going to be needing is Roblox Studio, um, the woman rig in Blender 2.8, which I will teach you how to get if you don't have already. Roblox Studio should be downloaded automatically once you get Roblox. And then you need two apps on your phone, but we're going to go ahead and talk about that later. So, first we're going to start off in Roblox Studio by loading in our Roblox character. So we're going to go up to the top, plugins, and then load character. If you don't have this button, all you have to do is add it. So, if you go, I think, I haven't done this in a while, but I think if you go to manage plugins and you press add, it should work. Um, but if that doesn't, all you have to do is search up load character plugin like on Google anywhere and then you'll probably find it and you can download it like that. So all you have to do is click on it and then you just have to put in your Roblox username. So I loaded in my character but if you can't tell I got rid of most of my accessories and stuff like that um, because I wanted to teach you guys how to add in your own accessories or like clothes or just like your outfit basically because I've had people ask me that before and if you just don't like your Roblox avatar you can definitely change it. So, oh, by the way, you have to load in your character with R6, not R15. Now we're going to go ahead and go back here, and I'm going to teach you guys how to load in your own hats first. So I found this video a long time ago on YouTube. Um, here you go, Foxman260. Um, he has this video, you can just find it, um, and he has this script. All you have to do is copy this, go to Roblox Studio, run a command. If you don't have that, it should be go to view and it should be command bar. And this will pop up at the bottom. And then just paste this in. And then now you're going to go ahead and find what you want to load in. So for me, I want to load in these glasses. So you just want to copy the code at the top. It should be right there. Copy. And then here it says ID item. You're going to want to delete this and then paste in your code and then enter. Then now it should be here. Go up to Explorer. If you don't have that, go to View and press this button right here. Now you're going to go ahead and click this arrow and there should be a little thing, a tab or whatever that comes down and it should be the name of the accessory you put in. All you have to do is drag that and put that on your name and you can delete the model. And there you go. Now it's on your avatar. All right, so now we have all of our hats, hair, accessories loaded in. So if you wanna change your shirt and pants, it's really simple. Do the same thing, copy the code. And then right here, if you click this tab, this little arrow of your name, all of these things will pop up. And you wanna go to pants or shirt or whatever you wanna load in come up to pans template if you do not have this um all you have to do is go to view and then properties and then right here pans template paste that in and there you go same thing with shirts go ahead and find your shirt here's mine copy the code go to shirt 
property shirt template, paste, enter. And there you go. That's how you completely can change your avatar. You can also change your face. Just go to images and toolbox. If you don't have that, go to view and then toolbox and then search up the face you want. I'll just do this one for example. What you want to do is find head over here. Click the little arrow, find face, delete. You can just keep it like this if you want or you can add a face. So find one that <laughs> works. Okay, I just found one, and what you want to do is just drag it near your face, and eventually it will pop right on. Now that we are done completely changing our avatar, and you're gonna go to your nave and explore. It's 11.18 in the morning, give me a break, I'm struggling. You're going to want to right click, go down to export selection, and save it to wherever you want. We're gonna go ahead and open up the Blender 2.8 with the woman rig or the more blockier version. I kind of forgot what it was called, but all you have to do is search up on YouTube. What was it? 2.8 Blender GFX. And if you want a, a like blockier kind of rig like right here you can see in these videos go ahead and click on this first video and there should be a link in the description of how you get that rig and if you want the woman rig there should be another video most of the things i found were by pickle pie she's oh she's amazing so you can also find this one i already have it downloaded so i'm not going to re-download it but all you have to do is click on the video then go to her description and there should be a link where you can download it so that's how you download your rigs once it is all downloaded you're gonna go to your downloads let me just find mine <laughs> So find it in your downloads and it should look like this. You're going to click it and this will pop up. So now you want to go to rig, default blend, double click on that and then your woman rig or whatever rig you're using in Blender 2.8 should go ahead and pop up. This will show up once you have it loaded in. Looks just like this. Before we continue the video, something really quick that you need to know is to move around in Blender, you need to hold down shift and the little squiggly key next to the number one and then you can let go after that and then you'll be able to freely move around and to stop, you just click on your screen. And then we're gonna go ahead and just press B on your keyboard and highlight just this face. It's a little tricky at first and then press X on your keyboard and then delete. So you basically want to just delete everything on the face or the head, whatever. Let's go ahead and go back to Roblox Studio and now we're going to go ahead and save some props and settings and rooms and stuff like that so you can build your own bedroom, your own props, stuff like that or you can just find a pre-built one you could just go to models and toolbox and search up whatever you need sometimes when i don't have time to build my own room i'll just search up like aesthetic bedroom something like that and all of these bedrooms will pop up make sure you find one that has an empty wall for example this one see how there's like this wall there's no wall here so you can look directly into it make sure you find one like that because that's really important for when you do lighting personally for me if you find a room that you really like but it doesn't have an empty wall for example we're going to use this one as an example see how there's no just like empty space where you can look directly in it's super simple just to just get rid of a wall let's click on it click the arrow and for this, it's pretty just sorted out nicely and organized. All you have to do is find the wall, wherever it might be, and just delete them. And then eventually they'll all delete 
and you just want to keep doing that until it gives you a nice open area like i can just keep it like this too you just want a nice open area that you can shine light into so i found this room and i think it's really nice and it matches the vibe of my character so as a if you're a beginner in roblox studio or just this whole thing in general i really do strongly recommend to get a find a pre-built room because it's <laughs> it's pretty difficult building a nice room as a beginner but if you can figure that out go ahead i'm not stopping you if there's a window and you want to have like a type of lighting where it looks like there's like window light you can go ahead and keep that personally i don't like that for intros i like that for like a profile picture or something so all you have to do is go to the thing and explore the room whatever you loaded in right click it export selection and save it i really like the idea of my character holding a book in this intro so if you want to do props it's literally the same thing and there you go now we have most of the stuff we want saved and we're gonna go ahead and head back to blender personally for me i like loading in everything before i load in my character textures i completely forgot to explain this in the video but to import your objects what you want to do is go all the way to the top left click file go down to import and then select wayfront obj then after that find the thing you want to import for example a bedroom and there's going to be two options it's going to say obj or mtl you have to select the obj one or else it won't import into your blender now my character oh not character oh my god it's so early i can't do this anymore my bedroom is all loaded in once you have loaded in all of your things you want to come over here and if you don't have this it should be there already but there's always this button right here outliner i think it was yes so we're gonna go ahead and find your things it should be right here click on it and press edit operator search origin set and to geometry right there and then now you can just move it around freely like that i'm gonna do the same thing with my book awesome so now that we have this all done I'm gonna go ahead and start loading in our character sound to go faster hold shift and that you can go faster now we're gonna change our settings a little bit go over here press this little thing kind of looks like a microwave almost it's render properties and render engine just change it to eevee it should be cycles at first but just change it to eevee it's just a lot easier to work with and if you want a transparent background, go ahead, press film, transparent, but I personally don't need that. Save this as an AVI JPEG quality 100 and just press the file or place you want to save it as. Just like that. Now, it's finally time to load in our character textures. I don't know how else to do this if there's a different way go ahead tell me down in the comments but for me i just click on each different body part go to this material properties right there x new this little circle next to base color image texture open and find my character yeah so that's how i personally do it if there's another way that's a lot easier um you guys can go ahead and do that just for me i think it works a lot so we're gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the body okay so we are done hopefully you guys are understanding everything i'm horrible at explaining and doing tutorials so hopefully you guys are getting this now we're gonna go ahead and load in the accessories and the head so go back to roblox studio <laughs> go to your character click on him or her and 
we're going to delete everything but the head and accessories so what you want to delete is the left arm left leg right arm right leg and torso just go ahead and delete that and now we just have the head and accessories left you can save the head and accessories separately um i do do that i think it's just a lot easier so to do that you just want to control hold control and click on all of your accessories and copy and paste them so now we just we just have them and you're going to click on the first accessory oh love english accessory hold shift click on your last one so now they're all highlighted that's a word <laughs> go to model and go to group so now your accessories should be all together now for back to our character you can just go ahead and delete all your accessories now we're just going to save them save them how you normally would with the props and stuff like that and uh, there you go so now we want to import them into blender so you're gonna go up to file import wavefront obj and then go ahead and open those things up make sure when you're clicking on your things you're selecting the obj and not the mtl there is a very big difference once you have them loaded in we're going to do the same thing origin to geometry turn the head over there you go and then the accessories same thing So there we go, now we have our whole character saved, every prop and things like that. There we go. And now it's time to start animating. So at the bottom here, you're just gonna pull this up. There should be this whole big thing, this timeline. You're gonna go to um, keying and select on this little key over here and then select locate and rotation and there you go and then now we're gonna go ahead and set up our little character so you want to set up your character how you want it to look in the first like few clips I guess or the first frame I suppose I can say that so I want to start her off with her just sitting on the bed looking at her book and to um, move or rotate the separate limbs just click on these little lines and you can move them separately if you're using a different rig and it doesn't work make sure you are in pose mode that's very important and then now you can just go ahead and move the different body parts So animating is actually really easy. Make sure your timeline's at zero, all the way scrolled up. And then what you want to do is just, <laughs> I don't really know how to explain this, but to add a keyframe, you're gonna press, make sure your mouse is on the where part, I guess, and then just press I on your keyboard. And that's going to add a keyframe. But what I like to do you could just delete the keyframe by pressing X is I first like to load in my camera to get into camera mode press 0 on your keypad and to move around in camera mode it's basically the same thing as moving around in general in blender just shift and the little squiggly thing next to the number one so my camera I, what I usually do is I like to look at other parts of the room and then zoom into my character so we're gonna go ahead and do that today and something that i also love to add is hdrrs they are oh they're so fun to use and they create great lighting so i will have all these sites and websites and things linked in my description so just go to this and this is like realistic backgrounds that 
you can put as an environment so as you can see right now everything's just gray but with these HDRIs, I think that's what they're called <laughs> you can make it look a little more realistic I guess so all you need to do is find the one you like so once you find um, the ones you like just go ahead and click on them wait for them to load all right so this is where you're gonna see once you have them loaded in I found three that I personally really liked so what you want to do is scroll down to download and I usually do 4k and just go ahead and save the file press ok and there you go right so now that everything is downloaded we're gonna go back to blender so now we're going to click on this little bubble right down here it should be the last bubble everything should go really dark because this is how your animation is gonna look like once it's all rendered and again make sure it's in Eevee and not cycles so now we're gonna go ahead and put in our environment texture we're gonna go over here to world properties click the axe new this little circle next to color environment texture open and then find the thing you just saved as you can see once it is loaded in it should look like it and make sure you're on this last bubble or else it won't show up and it also changes the lighting of this whole thing a lot so I like doing this because then once you look around the lighting's really nice and it also makes it look a little more better and just realistic I like to have my camera pan around the area like I mentioned before before I show my character if you want to do that just follow these steps it's very simple so you want to start where you want your camera to start so for example here make sure your timeline's at zero and then click i on your keyboard and that will load in a keyframe then you want to go to wherever you want this is not seconds by the way i don't know what it is but you just have to play around with it go to the next location you want your camera to be at press i again and you can just see how that looks you can move your keyframe however you want it to where it just makes sense and there you go that is how you move your camera i'm going to keep doing it just around the room sometimes your keyframes won't show up and what i find really helpful is that when you are pressing i on your keyboard to put in a keyframe is to have your mouse like on the animated area so like don't put your mouse here because sometimes that doesn't work for me i like to just have it here and that immediately loads in a keyframe so you can just go back and play it see how it looks and keep on doing that if you are already at the end you can just go to end and then change it to like a new number and that will make it go on for longer now that we are done with our camera animation we're going to click on one of the first body parts we want to move so let's say we want to move our head so you want to click on the head go all the way to zero and press I on your keyboard this will save the way your head stays still while the camera is moving and then keep doing that so that these little bars will show up that means that your head is staying still then once you get to where you want your head to move right now I want it at 105 you're gonna go ahead and move it because I have the head and accessories and different things, you have to do that twice. I actually just realized how difficult it actually is having the head and accessories as different files. So I went ahead and resaved it so it's the same thing. It's actually a lot easier to animate it like this. So now, just do the same thing. Once we get to that number, we're going to go ahead and animate it. So we're going to move it to where we want it to be next. Click I. You can just rewatch that little part. See how my head moves up. I will move it a little bit over though. There you go. 
and that is how you animate but obviously we're not done you want to go ahead and do that through the rest of the body parts make sure once you click a new limb for example like this all your keyframes will disappear because each different limb is a new time thingy down here so you always want to start at zero and just do this so it stays still while everything else is moving that is super duper important to remember to go back you just do Control z so if you want to undo something do Control z and to animate a prop with the hand it's super simple so again same thing start at zero and then once the hand starts to move, you want to move the accessible prop, or whatever you're doing, with the hand. I'm going to turn it over a little bit. As you can see now, the prop is moving with the hand. And then now that the that is done, we're going to go back to the head. And we're going to go ahead and animate the head. Oh, if something is staying like in place for a while, you want to make sure you do that same thing with these little bars because that makes sure that the head or whatever you're moving is staying still. And there you go. So that is how we animate the body. We're going to go ahead and go back to the camera. So click on the camera and we're going to animate the camera just a little bit so i want the camera to stay still but then we want i want a little movement there so every time you move an object or a thing you want to press i so that it's moving along with it so i think i'm finally done animating and i think it looks good so you can go all the way back to zero and just play back your animation make sure everything looks good fix keyframes if you have to and do whatever you need so i'm gonna go ahead and watch this and yep that's how i'm going to end it now you can go ahead and shorten the rest if you need because the longer it is the longer it takes to basically um render i guess now that we are done animating you just want to make sure all of our make sure it's at avi jpeg that's very important and then go up to render and render animation and now your animation is being rendered if it takes quite a while actually but you'll see how each frame is being <laughs> rendered at a times and you don't even have to bother downloading it at the end because it's once it's all rendered and complete it should automatically go to the place you saved it to which we set up before as you can see it's still going down there now we're just going to give it some time to render so now everything is rendered and as you can see it should be automatically saved to your computer and now Time to switch over to our phones so you're gonna go ahead and go to your google drive i'm not gonna open up anything because i don't want to accidentally leak anything but you want to open up your google drive on your computer and download the app on your phone and then just upload your video onto google drive so this is just an example of what you want to do you want to go to google drive new file upload find your file open and then it should save down here you should see that happening so i'm now switched over to my phone we're gonna go ahead go to our google drive and download the video to our phone so on the app you're gonna click the three dots send a copy i think and yes and then save video so once the video is saved it should be in your camera roll and what you want to do now is download the app CapCut um, and once you have it downloaded you want to click new project and then select your video and then add so now it is in CapCut here's your video and here is where I edit and add all my text and stuff with my phone 
Okay everyone, so this is the end of part one of how I make my animated intros. Obviously this video is really long, so I decided to split it up. This first part was just how I like animate them, and the second part, which will be posted sometime today, is how I edit the intros. Um, I use CapCut to edit, and I'll teach you guys how I do that in the next part. Oh, someone's at my door. So this is the end of part one. I hope to see you guys in part two to continue learning how I make my intros, and I'll see you guys then. Bye!